case you guys don't know, I'm going to do a little introduction. Uh, first, I'm Rachel Lashesky. I'm even though she doesn't <laughs>
So then coming into season two, it was just making sure that we still, you know, took as much care as possible with these characters and played it as truthfully as possible. like a big thing like way hot is gonna be big um so i guess what was the moment maybe for you guys i don't know emily maybe when you were writing or you guys when you were playing it where you're like hey this relationship is really going to be something special i mean as a as a big thing like this is a big thing I, it was i was never this was i had no idea but um, <laughs> really. um but i think a big thing as far as an important relationship was when they had a squabble in the police Cruiser, you know, where, where Nicole ro rolls up and just like you can't walk all the way out of town. Um, I think because there was something about having characters that had friction where you're like, okay, this is this is not just like a surface level flirting, but this is going to go to another level of figuring out why is there so much tension. So it was a moment of conflict for me. Yeah. Really good answer. <laughs> um, mine was probably earlier because it was when. It wasn't when I was writing it, but it was when I was watching the dailies of Dom and Kat do, um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, there's like a scene in Shorties, and it's kind of hard to explain, but like, Waverly gets a beer all over her shirt and she has to take it out of the Ridiculous. I don't know if you've tried to recruit people or talk about it, you find yourself talking out loud and you're like, and the character's name's hot and it sounds a bit much, but it's just enough. Um, so honestly, when I was watching the dailies and these two do it, I was like, oh my god. And then I think I did take you guys aside and I was like, so this might be a thing. I just want you guys to know about it that if we do it right, this chemistry is just incredible and it was just so joyous, like that scene could have been so ridiculous and kind of um, predatory and it wasn't any of those things. Yeah. It Can I ask so you a question? Great. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, did you, was like this in the vicinity of your thought when like you first, <laughs> well, I mean, no, but like, what it's become, oh is my it god, part not, of, not in okay. a million years. Like, I'm not even just being falsely humble, like, um, <laughs> not yet, like, look at all you people. <laughs> But especially for us, like going into second season is so different and you have to be really careful because it's a lot of pressure. But first season it was like all of us in weird costumes running around the woods of Alberta. And you're like, is there even film in the camera? I don't know. You know, like I was like, this show is really weird and really crazy. But then to see, honestly, you guys respond to it was just I thought it was special and I knew these guys were incredible. But just to see this response here, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You changed it. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm not just saying that. I've never seen anything like this. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know where you live, but I'm coming over. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, and because because of what and how important Way Hot did become, you guys did something like really unprecedented, and you gave away. The ending that Nicole and Waverly were both going to survive the season. Um, I've heard a little bit, Emily, you've talked about like why that was important for you to do, but I was wondering what Kat and Dom thought um, about that. Like when she said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna tell everybody that you guys survive." I mean, was it like a relief? Like I don't have to <laughs> hide it anymore. Or... Well, I, I, for me, I was like, oh, what, 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 yeah. "Why would we get Really important that we do because 
I wanted you guys to be able to hold on to it and not have any fear and be able to watch the, the season um, and just completely like, let go with like all your heart. And that's clearly what's happened. And I'm just, yeah, so grateful for that. <laughs> Tell us all the secrets about season two, do they? Okay. Dun, dun, dun. One, two, three. Uh, no, but I guess what can you tell us? I know you're not going to tell us a lot, but what can you tell us about season two? Oh, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so, so good. It's literally the best thing you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> season two just by virtue of the fact that it's season two which is like there's so much hype to lay in season one where you're like here are all the characters and here are the crazy rules and here's the curse and the remnants and that probably are you guys gonna watch this it's so crazy <laughs> <laughs> look over here it's um they got me shirt good <laughs> um but this year hopefully you love the characters and you know the situation and so you just we are able to take off like a rocket, and we already know kind of the relationships between all the characters, so we can just expand on that. And I say this all the time about this cast, it's so strong um, that I can throw any two characters together and just get something that's marvelous and really unexpected, really interesting rivalries, really interesting um, friendships and complicated stuff. So, oh my God, these guys are so committed this year though. Like, it is so cold in Calgary, you guys, and... Uh, these guys and Melanie's there right now. I'm just so proud of how dedicated they are. So I think you see that in the performances. Um, Mel wishes she could be here, but she's yeah. just working like a dog because yeah. obviously she's lying on an herb. Yeah. She's got to go kill some people. <laughs> um, you yeah. say, ah, uh, but you want her to be working. <laughs> you want her to be um, I mean, look, we have a million cliffhangers in season one to answer. So lots of stuff happening. Okay, go. Your turn. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, oh. Sorry, no. Yeah, no, please. No, I just feel to to bridge off of what Emma was saying. I just feel like the season feels deeper. Mm -hmm. It's like we got through a lot of layers, and now everyone's just a bit raw. That's what this season feels like. It's like everyone kind of got scraped along the floor, and now we're seeing like true colors come out and and secrets and and you know what, what secrets? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but things like part like like darker, uglier sides of these characters that just make them so much more complex and human and lovable because we can identify with that. But still fun, I promise. But still fun, <laughs> and it's a great time, yeah. What about Weha? What happens with Weha? Nobody cares, but I'm just gonna ask. <laughs> How gay is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to do some fan questions? Yeah. Okay. Just, oh. Um, I, I guess, I do how do we want to do it? it? Do we want to do like a lineup? Um, I don't know, did we plan? No, no, I was supposed questions. to plan it and I did it. We answered everything. Bye. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll go with it. Just yell. Yeah, go ahead. Allison. Oh, there you go. Why do I sing it? There we go. <laughs> um, so I want to know if there's like a story in the plot that you give away or tease about um, how Nicole, uh, how her hair gets cut short. Does, oh. like, <laughs> does Evil Waverly cut it off in a fit of rage? Doesn't she look amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, she's not sexy enough to do it. I wanted to be able to 
let her hair down a little bit. So, yeah. It was, I, I asked if it was okay. I was like, I kind of want to change her look a little bit. I was like, no one wants sexy Nicole. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, we'll try. <laughs> Can you yell? about what they want that relationship to be. But at the same time, everyone's gonna hate this for this, this is this is what you won't buy me a drink. Um, it's a drama. Oh, you're so nice. Um, it's a drama, right? Yeah. That has to happen. And I also think it's not a real relationship if there aren't challenges and them really trying to get to know each other as people. One of them cuts her hair, it's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> It's hard. I think the thing is, without being too writerly about it, you really have to be respectful of the character. I think when people make choices, whether they're good or bad choices, or have arguments, they have to be in the characters that Nicole and Waverly are. And I like to think those characters are three-dimensional women. So I just try to think of them as real people. It's in the same way I say like, not every relationship is the same, not every fight is the same, not every challenge is the same. So um, I think you have to hope that they're fighting for each other, even when things are hard. Aww. Aww. I really want that drink. <laughs> follow the cast on Twitter. We know that Emily is a very, has a very quick wit, yeah. is extremely creative, and is also very protective of her cast and crew. What, my question to you ladies, uh, what have you personally learned from her? Here is your $50. <laughs> I feel like this, it's a hard question because it's gonna make me cry. Um, no. Just saying <laughs> through your emotions. Um, I was saying, oh god, no, don't make me cry, so it'd be really awkward. Okay. Um, no, but I was saying earlier to somebody, I don't know who it was, um, that it's funny how, like, for you guys, you feel, oh, yeah, okay. Is it, <clears throat> that, like, this relationship and this show came at a really important time for you. I feel like this show came at a really important time for me as an individual as well as, you know, representing this character, and it's taken me on a huge journey, and if it wasn't for Emily taking a risk on me and realising, no, for real, it's like taking this really random girl from England and being like, let's put her in your show. Um, and she, Emily cares about her work and the people around it so much that you can, t I think you can tell in the writing and in the way that we just love the show so much because we wanted like to make her proud and you know, it's like, what she's taught me, that we're gonna get there, um, <laughs> is that if everybody has a common goal and it starts from the root, you can make something really special. And if you keep the right mentality and keep pushing it out, you, you honestly can do something that, you know, is just gonna change a lot of people's lives. And she's changed mine, she's changed yours, and she's kind of the best, so. Well. <laughs> I'll make mine really, really quick. One uh, thing to add on to all the things Dominique just said, because it's totally like changed our lives, um, is uh, I think how uh, uh, important it is to have characters who are ugly 
And like that ugliness is is beautiful because it's so much more real than like we live in this strange world of media and beauty and everything's perfect. And I think what I love about Emily's work and working for um, a female showrunner in particular is that um, it, it, it shows you just how important like darkness and ugliness and like deep characters are, that they don't have to be beautiful and pretty and fun all the time because it's not really real life. And just like how powerful it is to, to take that risk and because it creates things like this. So. We, we all know how smart Emily is, we all know how funny she is, but like what always impresses me and what is 100% true is her heart, and she's very genuine. I think that's really impressive. Let's talk about something else. Um, so a question that's really been preying on my mind. The way that I got my friends to watch Winona with me was by saying, oh my god, this show reminds me so much of Buffy. I never heard of it. <laughs> We have a lot of fun uh, as we watch comparing the characters to their Buffy equivalents. Right. The only one we had any difficulty with was Officer Hot because he's just so emotionally well adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> the best that we could come up with was Oz. And oh. we know the way that Joss Whedon would deal with an emotionally well adjusted character is by turning them into a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly made me really afraid for Hot's cat. <laughs> right. We've seen two other lesbian-owned cats die of unnatural causes. So I was just wondering if you could comment on whether we need to start hashtag bury your pussies. <laughs>
huge for us. It's massive. And I feel like even I can see since even the end of the first season, I feel like you are doing the work and more people are watching it and that means the world to me and us. Thank you. Okay, so are you guys able to tell us yet in what capacity we will see Willa and Bobo again? You will see both, maybe, in some capacity. <laughs> but we have some fun new characters this year, and one of them is here, and I would like to introduce her. <gasps> She's not that easy on the eyes, but just bear with me. Um, I'm not going to tell you who she plays, but she is an addition to our cast that we are super pumped about and we really love. Her name is Tamara Duarte, and she's right there, and we're going to make her stand up. <laughs> we really like her, and you probably will too. Yeah. Well, she's back. Who knows? Maybe she's back. You were so nice and gave us the guarantee for season one. Can we get it for season two? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? Wink, wink. Since I gave the guarantee that you two wouldn't die in season one, I feel like it was really off book for a writer to tell everybody that because we really needed it in 2016. Um, I'm very aware. I'm very aware of the importance of these two characters um, and their existence on the show and how we treat them. And that's what I guarantee you. But I am always aware of how I can help Just to, just to expand on that, like honestly, we have the best writing team in terms of like, I just never have any fears that you know, they're so aware of all of the importance of LGBT representation and just representation in general. And just, I, I personally, I don't know about you, but I literally have n no fears at all. So if I don't, then you shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to know, I think we all know the answer, but do chicks? <laughs> do chicks? Yes. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> And I think there's a lot of other Lexicon guests that are here that I know people would maybe like to see on season three or... I just saw a picture that you tweeted. It's really Is there anybody here who hasn't seen the show? It's no shame, I'm just curious. Is there anyone who's like, this is an intro for me? That's great! That's great. Yeah, so I just were, was wondering if you were pitching to any other Clexicon guests while you're here for season three. Season three? <laughs> well, I know there's like a lot of other guests here that people have like tweeted at you that they would like to see on Mine on Earth. Oh. So, are there any other guests like... Oh my god. Uh, yes, there are so many incredible actresses here that I would definitely have, have on Mine on Earth. If I could. And I will. I will get that. <laughs> <laughs> One way or another. Hey. Hey. Um, so I had a question from a friend um, who wanted to know more about the Road to Purgatory Tumblr. Oh, yeah. And um, so what made you think of doing that? And um, I, for Dom and Kat, what do you think of the entries and the Tumblr? And will it for season two. Ooh, good question. Oh. Um, so that was such a huge fun hit, and really a shout out to Digi Digital Howard who kind of um, did that with us. So for those who don't know, this was like a sort of gift to the fans we did after the show, which was Nicole Hot's diary about moving to Purgatory and kind of exploring Purgatory and um, meeting this character called Way Here. Um, we definitely have something super fun planned this year, uh, and it involves both of these two characters. Yeah. Um, I guess this is for maybe for Kat. Um, 
One of the moments that everyone really liked in season one was the scene between Nicole and Winona, and we got to see uh, Nicole outside of Way Hot. Um, so now that Nicole has been made a part of the Black Badge, um, can we expect maybe seeing some more yeah. scenes like that? There is a scene that I'm shooting on Thursday that is like my, one of my favorite scenes I read this season, and it's oh, with my own scene. Great! <laughs> <laughs> and I hope I don't screw it up, so we haven't shot it yet, but it's, it's like so brilliant, brilliantly written and so fun, and I love working with Melanie. Melanie's like, you guys, she's incredible. And yeah. is working so hard this year, and just what she's giving to, to us and to, to you guys is, is beyond words. But like getting to work with Melanie is because she's surprising and she she does things that that you're you're not expecting. So as an actor, it's like a, you have to be so on your toes with Melanie. And it's, I can't wait. I can't wait for Thursday. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, of Winona, like one of the best things in season one was the whole oblivious Winona thing to, to the way they have relationships. So um, I, I don't know how much you can tell, but um, are we going to see Winona maybe have some thoughts on Way Hot in season two? Yeah. 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 She definitely has some thoughts. I mean, I think that the thing that is really fun is that Winona is very protective of Waverly. So regardless of the fact that she is very friendly with Nicole Hot, um, she's protective of Waverly, so there's a real question of like, is anyone dating Waverly going to for Waverly, and uh, we, sh we shall see, but there's some really good stuff. I think my own is oblivious about some other stuff this year, which is pretty good, so, yeah. Hello. Um, yeah, I love the way that um, you can bring the, the relationship between, you know, how, how um, Winona views our relationship. Because it's, like you say, I think it's not so much about the fact that it's Nicole, I think it's more the fact that, you know, we've just got to the point where we've really solidified our relationship, having come, you know, she's come back to the town and we've just been working really hard on seeing eye to eye and being sisters and getting over the fact that she's the heir and not me, um, and all that kind of thing. And then finally we've got to a place where we're really good and then obviously at the end of the season, some horrible guy tells me I might not be enough. So that's like, for me, obviously, that that idea of being an identity is lost a little bit, is changing. And then Winona is like, oh, hang on a minute. Like, we were really, you know, getting somewhere with this, and now there's somebody else to take into the picture um, and take under consideration. And I think no matter who that would be, even if she is the most amazing, you know, amazing badass woman, it's still going to spark something off in Winona and no one's good enough for Waverly. Like it's like that thing when you love someone, it's like no one's good enough for them, even if they're the best person in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think Nicole has some, um, she may have some opinions about Winona too, right? Like they're different people. They're different people. So without saying anything, I just think yeah. it's complicated. They're three strong women, so. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh my god, it's evil hot. <laughs> Alright, so I know that you guys aren't going to give any spoilers, even though I had some really deep character-searching questions. And I'm not saying that I'm looking for this information for fan fiction or any reason. Right. But, since we are in Vegas, and we know that the bubblegum sake did not work out well, uh, what would Nicole and Dominique, not, Nicole and Waverly order at a bar in Las Vegas? Uh, what was it? What was it? The bubble? Did you say something about bubble gum? Bubble gum sake. I'm sorry. Do you not remember? I was oh, pretty oh, careful. Oh yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were they ordering? Don't worry, Ken. It's gonna be on Netflix in May. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that Waverly in season one would order something different to Waverly in season two. Oh. Good answer, huh? Oh. Yeah. Waverly has such an insane season. Dominique is incredible. Yeah. It's such it's such a tour de force, but it is just like a roller coaster. Yeah, it's, it's like amazing. every episode is like, what's Dominique's special skill this episode? It is. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. She used to be in like London's uh, theater scene. Very predominantly. Yes. No. Do you guys know this about Dom? No. Yeah. So this girl has many, many, many talents, which um, 
She gets to showcase brilliantly this season. No. <laughs> no. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> awkward. No, um, thank you. What would you call order? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I feel like Nicole's alcohol just gets harder and harder. <laughs> Last year, what I love about this season for Nicole is last year, everything was kind of, like, kind of she was just kind of nice. Like, everything felt really good for Nicole. And I think this year, it's just things get a little more frustrating, a little, like, more upsetting, and she, the, the, the barrier of nice, I think she can only hold it up for so long, and I think, so, that's, that's not really a drink, but it's, <laughs> like, just the it's content of alcohol increases. So maybe they, yeah, maybe it's similar for both of them, like, Probably in season one, Waverly would have drank like an amaretto and coke. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like nice sweet tooth. And now, tentacle oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> And now it's just pure vodka shots all the time. Yeah. And I do want to say something about Netflix. And I mean, the last time that Emily told us a date was in New York against Alex's wishes, where she said that we'd get the DVDs by yeah, December. Yeah, I don't even know if DVDs <laughs> exist anymore. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what's happening with the DVDs. I'm gonna start burning them myself and just leave them. <laughs> and straight <laughs> Can I just say this? My dad wanted to buy the DVDs yeah. for Christmas, and he went on, like, boxset.com. Oh. And he thought it was real. And I was like, Dad, I can't get you the DVD. I'm really sorry, I don't think it's out yet. And he's like, no, don't worry. I, he's not American. They said, no, don't worry, like, I've got them, and they turn up. You should see them. They're like, the most pirate thing I've ever seen. Like, I spent, like, a lot of money on these. I was like, well, good for you. I told you that we could get you. I think it was all in cheap Chinese. By, by the way, uh, Tim texted me straight after being like, oh my god, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> um, I do my best, Tim. I do what oh. I can. Um, so, now that there are more people in the Scooby gang, um, uh, who will Doc, like, uh, you know, attach to? Like, uh, he has other friends, but like, is he, in, you know, is he become friends with Cat or Dom? Like, is there a better relationship between those characters? He seems to know a lot about them, even before um, Melanie does, so, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that's really fun about Doc, because I think he's lived for so long that even though he's sort of old-fashioned, he's not easily shocked, you know what I mean, or offended. He kind of is a live and let live kind of guy, love is love kind of guy, so that certainly continues. But he has some really fun relationships this year with people who are unexpected. Wow. <laughs> he has a complicated relationship with his hat. <laughs> Okay, so building off the Tumblr, because a lot of people didn't see it, well, I think a lot of people didn't see it. Right. In season one, we got a lot of the, the Earp girls, their backstories. <coughs> season two, do we get more of Nicole's backstory? Yeah, yeah. yeah you do. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's 
pretty great. <laughs> watching the show and it helped just open a dialogue between them and I think that's like the most rewarding thing because when you're an actor you're, it's like you're acting into this black hole sometimes I do auditions and I want to be like in the middle of it be like is anyone watching this if you're watching this please call my agent and tell me you saw it but um but you know sometimes I can really feel like that and I think coming from we, we both did a little bit of theater it, you get that immediate audience response but on tv it's like there's it's just the crew and um, this, like, uh, this has been the, the most rewarding, the best thing that's ever happened to me or my career, but like me as a person, because I actually feel like I've been given a gift of being able to do something good with what I'm doing with my life. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. right now is so many people came up to me today and said I really want to write or I really want to create and I want to tell my own story and I you know I want to tell an LGBT story or a female story or what have you story um, and I'm gonna talk about this in my writing workshop but I want to say like now is the time like better now than ever I really want you to know that like, and this, and this I mean, it, it makes me emotional but it's not the half a throne I had in no dinner. But, um, you know, art is really important, and it's hard to talk about like art and Tanta Boku in the same sentence, but I'm going to. Um, this room is proof that there's an audience for the stories we want to tell. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So don't let anybody tell you that there's not an audience for the stories we want to tell. Because here we are. And we're all going to go out, and we're going to keep talking our stories. We're going to keep watching our stories, and that's how we're going to win, whatever that means to you. Okay? Hey, 
Maybe not. <laughs> Okay, is it is it lame if we do the wave? That's kind of fun, right? 